Earth is alive and it's evolving. This subject is going to get hot. You know that's more accurate if you stick it up your anus there, K2. Oh, it's you. Who else would it be? Well, you know, the dark universe is not the only universe that the Catapatron visor tunes into. You know that. Yes, right? but the dark universe has the most style. I mean, look at this shirt. Sinister. Wait, is that from the Red Thread store? Yeah, I mean, it's like a license to print money. Mm. Somehow I doubt that. No, no, seriously, you can print anything on a t-shirt. I mean, look at all these cool designs. It's not just t-shirts too, there's all kinds of merch. Hey, that's a good way to support the channel and look good doing it. Indeed it is. Uh, so, uh, what idiotic thing are you working on for today? Well, I've been feeling under the weather lately, which got me thinking about climate change. Is the earth getting hotter because it has a fever or is it evolving? What in the blazes are you talking about? I think you need to go see a doctor or something. May I suggest a psychologist? No, I'm serious. Earth might be sick, but I'm leaning more towards Earth going through a metamorphosis. Okay, let's take a step back there, Mr. Cryptic Messaging. But you're talking as if the Earth itself is alive. Oh, but it is, Evil Fred. Let me explain. First, when I say Earth is alive, I'm not suggesting that the planet is a sentient being or anything, but rather it exhibits characteristics of a living organism. The Earth has a self-regulating climate, interconnecting ecosystems, and dynamic set of processes that maintain conditions suitable for life, just like a living organism. Earth's various components, like the atmosphere, oceans, biosphere, work together to maintain a balance, much like our bodies do. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's not a new concept, but what I would like to do is take it one step further. Ooh, living dangerously, aren't you there? <laughs> Sinister. Thinking and speaking outside the box could get you canceled in your universe. I mean, just ask Kanye West. Noted. I will tread lightly. Okay, so you see, it not only does it show characteristics of a living organism, it has living cells. Okay, there it is, Kevin. Did you just jump the shark? There he goes! Oh no, no. That, that's not until season two. Think of it like this, evil friend. The crust of the planet is like the skeleton, and the atmosphere is like the skin. All life forms existing between the two are the living cells of this living organism. And so by extension, all living life forms on the planet make up the living earth. And thus, the earth is alive. Okay, so you're telling me that we are earth? Like That sounds like some pie in the sky hippie nonsense to me. Are unicorns real too, Kevin? Did you ride one to set today? Perhaps on a highway in the sky made of rainbows? I mean, I guess it's not so far-fetched. They were real in our universe until we hunted them to extinction. Yeah, you guys are pretty evil. <laughs> Sinister's at the top, we love it. All right, Evil Fred, you done? So, so think of it like this. Instead of looking at the human race as a virus, as many people do when talking about climate change, we should look at ourselves as cells of Earth one of many cells that make up this living organism, which has a closed system, much like we find in our own body. Okay, I get what you're saying. I have heard that at one time, organelles of a cell were independent entities of bacteria, forming a symbiotic relationship and eventually evolving to form a cohesive cell. Yeah, exactly. Like the organelles that formed that cell, they formed us and thus we form the earth. Oh, wait, so you think we're an organism within an organism? Please. My mind is blown. But what's up with the whole metamorphosis concept? Well, how else do you explain climate change? Okay, so you think climate change is the Earth going through a metamorphosis? Yes. Did you ever watch PBS as a kid? Of course. 
They said that climate change is a sign that our planet is stressed. Because of the burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, and other human activities that increase greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which trap heat and cause temperatures to rise. Yeah. Never did they say the Earth was alive or going through a metamorphosis. Uh, that being said, PBS are the most prolific propagandists in our universe. Perhaps yours is sufficiently sinister as well. PBS, like Sesame Street? Oh yeah, our version of Sesame Street is rated R, is implicitly violent, plus quite depraved. It's a source of great pride and is a cultural institution for us. Wow. I think I need to see your version of Evil Sesame Street because I have no idea what that entails. And eh, no problem. I got 15 seasons on Laserdisc. I can broadcast them over. Again, what's up with these Laserdiscs? Man, they're awesome. Don't knock them. Okay, well, you're diverting from the point. So what I'm trying to say is Earth's metamorphosis is happening, whether we like it or not. And the human race is speeding this process up. Look, I get what you're implying. It's sort of like a child growing or going through puberty. Yeah. In those periods, their metabolism is operating at a much higher level and included are things like increased body temperature. Exactly. But let me stop you there. Do you think humans are the only factor contributing to climate change? I mean, there's so much more going on than just that. The Earth has complicated and long cycles of hot periods and cold periods. The Milinkovitch cycle, for example, this is an orbital variation in the Earth's orbit. You see, Kevin, the Earth's orbit is not perfectly circular, but rather elliptical and wobbly. Its eccentricity varies over time. When the orbit is more elliptical, it can lead to greater variation in the distance between the Earth and the Sun. This variation affects the amount of solar energy the Earth receives at different times of the year. All true, but... You see, it has been suggested that we are still at the tail end of the last ice age. We call this the quaternary glaciation, which began approximately 2.58 million years ago and continues through today. The last glacial maximum of this ice age was only about 20,000 years ago. All right, however, you have to realize evil friend. Uh, look, I, don't, I do want to point out that in most of Earth's history, there have been no ice sheets or polar ice caps. Only in the last few million years have there been any. So climate change could be natural. Yeah, I mean, you're right, but there's so much more to the story. So may I please continue? Sorry, in my reality, it's a touchy subject. As it is here. So everything you said is right, but at the same time, there's no denying that humans have altered the planet more so than any other organism in history. Not more than cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria are ancient bacteria that can perform photosynthesis. Cyanobacteria are thought to have been responsible for producing the oxygen that gradually accumulated in the atmosphere and allowed more complex life forms to evolve. They're like the original Genesis project. Well, put simply, Genesis is life from lifelessness. Instead of a dead moon, a living, breathing planet capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Okay, but that only furthers my point. You can argue that it was only one of Earth's metamorphic periods. So where, where was I? S some nonsense about humans speeding up climate change, metamorphosis crap. Ah, yes. Okay, so when scientists look at the cores extracted from the ice sheets in the Arctic, they concluded that there has been about a 42% increase of CO2 in the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. And no matter how hard you try to argue, there is no denying that we are changing the planet. Not just with our pollution, but our cars, our cities, our factories, our farms. You know, cows produce a crazy amount of methane. <laughs> Not as much as me after a trip to Taco Bell. Well, unlike the predictable ill effects of eating Taco Bell, scientists still can't predict what the outcome of our involvement will be. What humans have done is they've taken carbon that's in the slow carbon cycle, and they've put it into the fast carbon cycle. And it's not supposed to be there at this kind of time scale. So we've just injected a lot of carbon into the fast carbon cycle. One of the maxims in ecology is you can never do just one thing. So when you pump a lot of carbon from the slow cycle into the fast cycle, that ends up having a, a cascading series of effects um, that can be difficult to predict. And I think this is where the public often has a hard time understanding climate change. It's not that scientists don't understand the climate is changing and why. Those parts we know really well. The difficult part is predicting the effects because those are quite complex because 
everything in nature is so interconnected. So you change one thing and it has a cascading series of effects on many other things within that interconnected system. As you can see, we're moving into uncharted waters. Well, I for one love uncharted waters. When I was young, I got lost at Raging Waters when I found a nutty candy bar floating in the pool. It was one of the best summers ever. Candy bar? You know that was crap, right? Shh, no, it only tasted funny because it was soaked in chlorine. I understand chemistry, Kevin. But anyways, I digress. What I wanted to say is that the Earth has endured much more in the past and it has survived thus far with no problems. I mean, yeah, Earth has survived many cataclysmic events. But for the life forms living on her, they haven't been so lucky. Yeah, I mean, there have been many large extinctions during these periods in history. But most of those were in the Earth's early development stage, like 444 million years ago when 85% of the marine species died from global cooling. And again, about 360 million years ago, when 75% of all life went extinct, again, due to climate change. Yeah, I mean, it happened then and it could happen again. And that's why so many people are scared. Like who? Well, Carl Sagan for one. He was a big advocate for climate change and feared that one day Earth might reach a turning point and eventually have a runaway greenhouse effect, much like Venus experienced four billion years ago. And trust me, he's not the only one who fears this. How dare you? I, for one, am all about chaos. But even that's getting a little ridiculous. I mean, what did Monet or Van Gogh ever do to the climate? Well, they, they painted with oil paints. Oil paints. Well, when people start believing that the humans are like a virus killing this world, their reactions are kind of predictable. Well, then what's the solution? Cut all CO2 emissions? Go back to the dark ages? Uh, I don't think that's possible. It's like the farming revolution. You can never put the rabbit back in the hat. What I think we should do is stop viewing ourselves as a virus, but instead as the living Earth. And if that's the case, then this is all part of Earth's evolution. And Earth will eventually return to a balance as soon as it finishes its evolutionary cycle. This can be life adapting its biology to fit in the new world, or us adapting our technology. But what I am certain, it's going to get ugly out there. I mean, just look at some of these headlines. You know, I'm from the dark universe, and even I think everyone should be environmentally conscious. Eh, just maybe not so nutty about it, regardless if this is all part of Earth's evolution or not. After all, everyone hates pollution, especially in your own backyard. And I'm talking to you, Silicon Valley. Oh, I 100% agree. You know, the majority of pollution comes from developing nations, and it's hard to blame them. They're just trying to catch up. Eh, granted, but anyways, so where were we? So we are the Earth's living parts. Yes. And the Earth is evolving. Yes. That would explain that even after all the large extinction events in history have happened, more complex life still emerged, such as humans. In fact, Earth's climate change spurred our human evolution in the past. It is widely believed that climactic change led to the evolution of the human species in the first place. Oh, definitely. I mean, our ancestors were living in trees in Eastern Africa. Then slowly the climate changed and the forest became grasslands. At this point, the ability to stand upright gave those few who could the advantage. In short, a few million years go by and you ended up with human beings. Yeah, sexy people with a lot of facial hair like me. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's my point. It leads to more complex life forms. Evolution never stops and Earth is always evolving, us with it. I really don't think the human race is going anywhere, but I do think we will be changing. Yeah, I wonder what Earth, or should I say us, will become. Do you think the Earth will grow a goatee? What are you talking about? No, man, we're gonna have gills like in a water world. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Looking around and we see and stuff. But, but hell, man, I'd just be happy if it keeps us around at this point. I mean, how can it not? Have you seen me in the Speedo? I have oh, a Oh God, no, 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 we're not doing that. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'd also like to thank our patrons, who I hope we still have after the Speedo incident, Super Dave, Roebuck, Razorback, and of course, Yoko. Without your generous donations, this show would not be possible. So thank you very much. I'm Evil Fred. And I'm Kevin, reminding you to follow the red thread and see where it takes you. But I really do think I have a fever. I mean, is it normal to lose vision in your right eye? I mean, if you do have a fever, just do what my mom did for me when I was a sick child. What's that? 
Well, she would drive me 50 miles outside of town and drop me off, then have me walk back home. Uh, she was always surprised the next day when I'd show up without my fever. I don't think that was the point. Well, anyways, I should go home and get some sleep. Ah, sleep, you say? How about some maternal sleep? I can help you out with that. 